3.17 p.m., July 20th, 1969, when the Apollo 11 astronauts become the first people in history to set foot on another world. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Russia suffers a crushing defeat in the battle to conquer space. When Armstrong and Aldrin landed on the moon, I think the Russians were devastated. I think that was a big blow to them. But just three days before the American landing, the Russian attempt to upstage their American rivals appears to be going well. As the unmanned Soviet probe, codenamed Luna 15, arrives in lunar orbit. The probe's mission is to drill into the surface and beat the Apollo astronauts back to Earth with mankind's first samples of moon rock. Everything seems to be going fine. But then four minutes into the descent, everything cuts out. Bam. Nothing. Five years later, the Russians make another attempt to return to the same area with Luna 23. But the second craft also crashes and fails to bring back any rocks from the sea of crises. Despite the setbacks, the Russian space agency launches another probe, hoping that it can beat the odds and avoid whatever caused its predecessors to fail. Luna 24 follows very soon after Luna 23, uh, lands just a couple of miles away. The Russians aren't giving up on this one. Luna 24 succeeds where the previous Russian missions failed, returning to Earth with a precious sample from the unexplored region. The sample of lunar soil brought back weighs less than seven-tenths of a pound, but has a big impact on the Soviets' understanding of lunar geology. The results of the analysis shock Soviet geologists. It looked like something had happened to the soil in an area of the moon that was supposedly undisturbed for billions of years. What could it have been? Tests on the sample confirm that the soil used to be buried deep underground. Someone, or something, brought it to the surface. The Soviets know that the Americans haven't been to this part of the moon. They think this is their turf. So they have to face up to the question, who the heck's been disturbing the lunar surface here? Could someone else have landed on the moon before the US and Russia? I have heard that the Germans developed a moon rocket before they were defeated in 1945. We know for a fact from NASA's own records, the Germans had a very advanced space exploration program. During World War II, the Nazi regime asked von Braun to develop the V-2 rocket, the first man-made craft to reach space. NASA and their Russian counterparts both know that this Nazi superweapon was a key step in the development of their own moon rockets. We would not have been able to land on the moon if it hadn't been for the Germans. Damn right. The first American rocket was based on V-2 technology. The first Russian rocket was essentially just a V-2. How difficult is it to believe that the Nazis pushed their technology just that little bit further? I really wonder if the, if the Germans could have gotten to the moon. Actually, I think they could have. Nazi technology may have had the potential to reach the moon, but there is no evidence to suggest that a German spacecraft disturbed the dust of the Sea of Crises. In 2011, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter sheds new light on the mystery of the Luna 24 probe. Against all odds, Luna 24 landed in the vicinity of Crater. The image from the LRO reveals that by pure chance, Luna 24's landing spot was at the edge of a crater from an asteroid impact that released rock from deep underground. The Soviets were hoping this would be a perfect landing site, but nobody knows what the lunar geology is going to be until they actually land. So the Luna 24 sample that seemed like freshly disturbed dirt was the result of geology rather than Nazi technology. On the summit of Mauna Kea in Hawaii, NASA's powerful infrared telescope zooms in on Earth's nearest neighbor. 
In March of 2003, the data starts showing something strange. It is now absolutely certain that there is methane on Mars. It was something like 19,000 tons of, of methane being produced on Mars that, that really we couldn't explain. The implications of this discovery stun astronomers. The very presence of methane on Mars is really uh, extraordinary. One of the very exciting things about finding methane on Mars is that it's an indicator of biological activity. It might be a signal that there are living things. Uh, and living things on another world would be, of course, one of the most dramatic findings in the, the history of science. NASA scientists launch a long-term investigation into the source of the weird phenomenon. They must first determine if the clouds of gas are simply a relic from Mars' geological past. Methane has a very short lifetime in the Martian atmosphere. Mars is a very oxidizing place, and that kind of burns the, the methane up. For it to even be there in any detectable amount means that there has to be a source for it. It has to be replenished. Where would this methane come from? Investigators struggling to answer this question turn to our own planet for clues. On Earth, there's, there's a few ways of making methane. So volcanoes, for example, make methane. There once were great volcanoes on Mars, but we have no evidence whatsoever that there are any active volcanoes on Mars today. So the recent discovery of methane on Mars is unlikely to have come from any volcanic activity. The absence of volcanic activity on Mars forces scientists to consider a startling possibility. On Earth, most methane is produced by living organisms. For example, cows. Cows produce vast amounts of methane as part of their life cycle, as part of their metabolism. What if methane in the Martian atmosphere was telling us that today on Mars, they were life forms alive somewhere producing it? Since NASA first detected methane, mankind has dispatched 10 missions to explore the atmosphere and surface of Mars. So far, none have discovered definitive proof of life. But maybe we've been looking in the wrong place. The idea that uh, there's methane on Mars, where we really wouldn't expect it to be found, is, is maybe a hint that perhaps there could be uh, a source that's associated with, with life, maybe in the subsurface. I think if there is life on Mars, it's likely deep underground. And I don't think there's any good arguments that can be made that say there can't be right now.